Welcome back to Photoshop Basics on PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak, and in this episode I'm going to talk about depth of field and how to simulate it with the Gaussian Blur filter in Photoshop. There can be shallow focus or deep focus in a photograph. Usually you take photographs with deep focus, but when you want to concentrate on a particular part, if you want to emphasize a particular part of an image, you can use shallow focus by changing the aperture and the distance between the object and the camera. The closer you go to the object, the shallower the depth of field will be. In this case we have a deep focus, nearly everything is in focus, but I would like to have only focus on the car. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this layer into a smart object so I choose convert to smart object by right clicking on the layer and then I go to filter and I go to blur and choose Gaussian blur. Now this is going to be applied as a smart filter as we know so it's completely non-destructive. I will set up a radius around 10 pixels something like this. It blurs out the whole image, so I click on OK, but I would like to only see this blur in the background. What I'm going to use is nearly the same technique that I used for sharpening with the parrot in the previous tutorial. So I will select the mask here, the smart filters mask, and I will use my brush tool with a black color and I will draw over the car. You can see we can easily get rid of the effect of the blur from the car and we can only use the effect on the background. Of course you can be more precise if you make selections and not only use the brush tool but by only using the brush tool you can see the power of using smart filters and using blur to change the depth of field. If I want to, I can even increase the shallow focus effect by double clicking on Gaussian blur and increasing the radius of the blur, like this. Now you can see this was before and this is after. If you select the mask, you can always refine the mask with using the brush tool. And even here in the foreground, you can use a 50% opacity for the brush and you can increase the focus a bit around the car, something like this on the ground to make it even more realistic. I will now show you another example. I'm sure you heard about the tilt shift technique to create miniatures from photographs and this is a really good example. So it's a real life photograph of a bridge and I would like to turn this into a miniature and I will do that by increasing the depth of field. I will convert this layer into a smart object and then I use the same filter Gaussian Blur. As you can see the last used filter is always here on the top so you can easily select it again and I will use something like 7 pixels or maybe a little bit even more something like 8 or 10 pixel radius on this image and then I select the mask and now instead of using the brush tool I will use the gradient tool which is here on the toolbar the gradient tool and I will set it up to this option which is called reflected gradient so that one and I will use black and white as my two colors uh, selected in foreground and background and I will click and drag over the bridge like this. Now the only problem as you can see is that we have the blur only on the bridge and not around the bridge but I would like to have it the opposite way so I uncheck this option here in the control bar called reverse. So I uncheck that and I click and drag again to draw over the bridge so I will start somewhere here at the bottom and I go down, I think something like this, maybe a little bit even more down, yeah I think something like this would be nice. If now we zoom out you can see that we only have the focus on the bridge and we blurred out the background and the foreground quickly and easily by using a gradient 
on the mask. So again, if I alt click on the mask, you see that we hid the effect of the Gaussian blur from the bridge and we only apply it on the background and the foreground. So this is why I use the gradient to have this nice smooth transition between the sharp and the blurred out part in the image. I hope you found this also useful. You can see that by using smart objects we have more control over nearly everything that we use in Photoshop. So it is really important to start using them. In the next tutorial I will talk more about making selections a little bit more difficult selections like selecting hair. So make sure you come back next time and learn more about Photoshop. But thanks for your attention today and see you next time.